Hi guys, today we're going to take a look at an example of how you can use the blocks post action uh, together with Zapier. Uh, in our example today, we're going to be creating a webhook to update a Google spreadsheet. What we're going to need uh, for this uh, tutorial today is a blocks widget that contains all of the input fields for the information that you'd like to pass on for your spreadsheet. A spreadsheet that already has the uh, structure defined and a Zapier account. Um, now for very small usage with very basic zaps, you can actually create that for free. So it's very recommended um, and please do try it and play with that. So we're going to start by taking a look at our blocks widgets. Our blocks consists of two columns. The first one actually contains this image. You guys can see that I've added a little bit of CSS in order to make it look pretty. While our second column contains this entire um, form. Um, it actually consists of multiple containers that I personally created for the sake of my convenience. The first one contains uh, the header, um, and that's basically the three text blocks that we can see on top. The second one is the actual form, where we can see a lot of input fields together with text blocks. Uh, each text block um, contains the description of the input, and the inputs themselves uh, are going to contain the information that we'd like to collect for our spreadsheets. One thing that is very important when creating the input fields, if we'd like to pass on their value to, uh, to different actions, is that we have to give them the IDs that define where exactly should the information go to inside the action. Um, for example, if we take the uh, name input, we can see that this is a text input, uh, and we say that the information added inside this input should go into data and the attribute name. When we take a look at the number of slices, we see that under data, we'd like to add that to the attribute slices, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the toppings that we love are all toggle inputs. Um, we have the on and off values defined for them. These are the values that are going to be passed on for that action. And we can see that we've created an ID for each one of our toppings separately um, in our specific case. If we wanted, we could also uh, concatenate the values one after the other by using a multi-choice input. Now, if we go to the very bottom of our blocks widget, we can see that under the container of the form, we have an additional element. This is the action set. An action set is a container-like element that um, acts exactly like any other element. We can add it inside columns, inside elements. We can apply CSS on it. Um, but instead of containing other blocks elements, it contains actions. Um, in this specific case, I used an action set because I wanted the submit button to be contained inside this column and actually to be shown right next to the pizza image. If you wanted, you could add the action inside the action array. Um, you can go to the block documentation for more information about this. The structure of the action itself um, is this. In the type, we have the action submit and the post. This is what is going to tell blocks that we're using, that we're going to send a post request. We have the URL, which we're going to fill in in a moment, and we have the data attribute. Now, theoretically, this data attribute could also contain the attributes name, slices, olives, mushrooms, comments, etc. cetera. Um, when we hard code values or when we add data from the cube, we're actually going to be adding the information here. So for example, if we wanted, we could add name, say the name is hard coded to a D, we could add olives, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. In our case, when we use input, this is actually not necessary, and the reason is that when you give an input item, uh, an input element, an ID of data dot something, 
that value is actually going to be injected into the data attribute. So we're basically imitating a JSON where we added all of the information from our inputs, um, which is going to be planted directly into data. What we need to do after we, after we finish our blocks widget is uh, create a zap. Creating a zap is actually quite simple. When you go to Zapier, you click on make a zap. And we're going to select the webhook action. A webhook basically waits for different API requests. And once it's called, it's going to pass on the information to additional steps. Uh, we're going to uh, choose a catch hook, which is going to be waiting for our post request. And now we have the URL. At this point, our webhook doesn't have any specific structure. Uh, we're going to be dictating that structure using our actual blocks widget the first time that we define it. So let's copy the URL that we're getting for our webhook and go back to blocks. The URL that we got is now going to be added into our actions URL attribute. And for the first time, let's fill in our form. My name is Adi. I would like to have two slices, and I like olives, mushrooms, and pepperoni. Let's submit. Our um, form has been successfully sent, and now we can go back to Zapier and say that we already did try using the webhook. And lo and behold, Zapier has noticed that we've sent request with the following information. Now you guys can see that while we in blocks kept the data attribute as an empty object, um, the input elements have already injected themselves into the data that we sent to the webhook. So now we can continue because our trigger is completed and we can create the next step. In our case, the next step that we're going to want to create is an action, and we're going to choose a Google spreadsheet. Now, this is what is going to happen every time the webhook is called. Um, we are going to want to create a spreadsheet row in our Pizza Night spreadsheet that we've already created. Now, do know that if you're going to add records into an existing Google spreadsheet, it already has to exist, and it has to have the appropriate headers like this. So again, we choose create spreadsheet row, we continue. We confirm our account. And by the way, this is where you authenticate. Anytime that you guys are going to be um, using the webhook, your users are going to be using the webhook, uh, this is the account um, for which the action is going to be provided. And um, therefore, it will be authorized to add those, um, those records. So let's continue. We will choose the spreadsheet that we'd like to update. In our case, that is going to be pizza night. Inside the worksheet, we only have a single one, so we're going to be choosing orders. And now we can see all of the columns, all of the headers that we have already defined in our pizza night spreadsheet. At this point, we will need to insert a field in order to provide in, um, data to those columns. At this point, you can see that the information that we've added from our input is already here. And we can see the data that we've added to the very first time we call this action right next to it so we can actually kind of see what we're going to add into the spreadsheet. So the name is going to be the name from inside the action slices two, and for then we're going to map each and every one of the toppings that we chose. Wonderful. Let's continue. And now our zap is almost complete. We can see the data that we've sent. 
and we can send the test to our Google Sheets. So let's try that and then go back to our pizza night spreadsheet. Now you can see my order, um, a D, I ordered two slices with olives, mushrooms, pepperoni, no pineapple, no pineapple, onions, anchovies. At this point, I didn't add any comments, um, though we could. Now our zap is completed, we've finished, and the most important part is giving it a name. So let's call it pizza nights and turn it on. Do not remember this step. By default, all your zaps are off. That's it. Um, our zap is ready, our blocks is ready, and now we can go ahead and order pizza for other people. So I will be ordering pizza for my friend, Ron. He'd probably like to have three slices, and I will assume that he likes olives, pepperoni, and maybe pineapple. I don't know. Let's submit, go back to our spreadsheet, and we have Ron's order as well. Um, any user which is going to have access to this dashboard will be able to submit their pizza order. Um, and that way we can actually get a lot of information into our spreadsheet. This is one example. Um, you don't have to order pizza. You can also create a feedback form. Um, you can get a lot of information. You can update records rather than adding them, or you can create, use completely different apps for uh, your steps. Uh, you can send uh, messages in Slack, you could use Skype, you can basically do whatever you'd like as long as it is mapped to Zapier. Um, this dashboard is going, to be, um, is going to be available to you, so be sure to take a look at that and um, do cool stuff. We're here to help.